Good day, traders. The four-step method to high-performance trading and the free audio program, the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders, are both free downloads to help you develop the skill set, the mindset, the discipline to master the markets. The link is down below in the box, the description box. They're both free downloads. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today, we're going to talk about breakouts and why most breakouts fail and the importance of understanding the templates. Um, I think there's a paradigm shift that traders, some traders understand this now and other traders are still scratching their heads and can't figure out for the life of them what's happening, even though they've got the playbook and, and I'm hopefully going to be able to break this down. Uh, so that it makes cleaner sense in understanding the, the big setups, the, the big powerful setups. The ones that allow traders to have a five-star opportunity and to understand how that actually starts. Jim Dalton in his book, uh, Markets on Profile, Dalton on Dalton, talks about markets that open outside of a previous day's range. So that would be a market that has broken out. That means conditions have changed and the market is out of balance. One of two scenarios is possible. The market will continue to drive in the direction of the breakout or the market will begin to auction back and forth at the new price levels. So understand that if a market opens inside of the same day's previous ranges, that it is generally within value and in balance and awaiting new information and a market that opens outside of value is out of balance and carries with it greater opportunities and risk. So a great question from a trader that uh, just came up was, how do I backtest things? So we're going to come back to a, a basic whiteboard understanding. When our week starts, we talk about the opening range. We could have a market that has traded inside of Friday's high and low, might have even extended out and comes down and closes here. This market, even though it's gone higher, has closed inside of Friday's high and low. It is still in balance or in the what's construed as the value area. After Monday has traded, we have our opening range for the new week. We're still in balance or in the value area. Even though we've had higher highs, we haven't necessarily had any breakout traders trapped on either side. Assuming we'll just start the week from day one, we won't even worry about Friday. And on Tuesday, the market could break down and pull back and trade through not only Monday's low, but Friday's low and pull back inside and close back inside of Friday's low. Now that's what we call our initial balance. So now we have a market that has made a lower low and our high from Monday, that's our initial balance heading into our day three. But understand that the closing price, the closing price of Tuesday is still inside of Friday's high and low, still inside of our, our value area. So we've had breakouts attempted to the upside, breakouts attempted to the downside, but the market has not broken out and stayed out or closed outside of that range. So again, re reinforcing, it has opened outside of a value area. It has not broken out yet. It is still inside of the value area. So read this again. A market that opens outside of a value is out of balance and carries with it greater opportunities and risk. So yes, depending on what time this opportunity happened up top, there might have been a short trade opportunity somewhere in London or the U.S., and there may have been a low-hanging fruit opportunity in the U.S. session or at the in, in London heading into the U.S. open for a reversal opportunity for a scalp. But understand the market is still inside of Friday's high and low. Now, the big problem is, is that traders are trading all inside of this looking for a five-star opportunity and in the meantime, they're trading inside of the high and low of Friday's range. I'm using this as an example. Now, we may have had a market that actually traded down and put in a peak formation low Thursday or Friday or even Monday or Tuesday heading into the new week. 
and we may still be inside of the opening range and initial balance, but we might be setting up now for a opportunity based on news or based on the three-day setup, whatever that may be. But when we're inside of a, of a previous day's range, even though the market may have broken out, where did the market close? Now, I'm talking about the New York close. I've got traders emailing saying, oh, I'll use the London close and open and 5 p.m., 5 p.m., New York closing charts. What's important is when a market closes outside of the range, when the market closes outside of the range, now we have a market that has gone out of balance. Remember what Dalton says here, a market that opens outside of value is out of balance and carries with it greater opportunity and risk. I don't know what this market's going to do the next day. Break down in Asia and pump up in London, squeeze in the US for a vertical continuation. This market could immediately go up and break the high and fail, come back into breakout traders, and possibly set up for a first red day. Still closing outside of the previous breakout area, but back inside of the previous day's value area that broke out and went out of balance. But this is where opportunities can start to present. We can get opportunities that form our first red days. We can get markets that break down and go vertical. Remember when this trader gets into the market, we know that other time frame traders are now in the market. Now let's talk about a session opportunity. Let's say this market breaks out in London. We may have an opportunity for a parabolic trade in the US session. Again, when the market goes outside of the previous day's range, most breakouts will fail. If this is the end of day close, the same thing can happen over the next three days. This market could coil, give an inside day, break the low and continue back long again and do a measured move of the initial move up. We have several scenarios depending on the setups, the calendar, the news calendar, the template, the days of the week, etc. If this happens in a session window, this can set up for the next session's opportunity. We can get a market that could proceed to go three levels of rise outside of the breakout level high of day heading into the new next session, whether it's London, the US, or even Asia the next day. We can get a market that will set up for a US, uh, Asia, London, US range extension and an Asian collapse. We can get a US, Asia, London collapse. We can get an Asia, London, US collapse. And the same thing can go in the long direction because there are only two types of trades, pump and dumps and dump and pumps. So the key thing I'm trying to reinforce is that the opportunities lie when the markets break out. Now, if we have a market that is already broken down, as we've seen this week in several pairs, and the market pumps up inside three levels, Asia, London and breaks down and it hasn't broken out. It's already broken down from the previous day's session. It's targeting the low of the day. Now, once it goes outside of this low of the day, again, coming back to if we go and look at the back of the playbook, putting it all together, most stop hunts will extend 25 to 50 pips outside of the range. Now, what's important to understand about this is that you're not counter trending an explosion out of the daily high low. We're talking about a market in the timing window that is broken out, hits the first quarter. It may continue for another 25 to 50 pips. It has to do with the timing and the behavior of price when it gets to those levels. And we will talk about this. 
So I have traders who just because it gets to the low of the day, they buy it and they get smashed and they go, this doesn't work. No, you've missed the first trade on the way down, the collapse. They've pumped it back up to the breakout level from the previous day. So breakout traders stopped out with break even or they didn't take any money or whatever. They trap new longs into the market before breaking down. And they don't just tap this level. We've got longs off the beginning of the day. We've got longs up in Asia and London. They're going to go 25 to 50 pips outside of the range. So again, understanding once the market breaks out now at the timing, if the timing window is still intact and there's no other major red news on the calendar, we still may have opportunities now for reversals. So for traders who miss this, maybe the first trade outside of the box, which is the low hanging fruit continuation or the London traders sold the high of the day, we could get now a range expansion down of two or three times this distance for a potential profit target, which can take traders again, 25 to 50 pips outside of the range. But the reversal also now coincides about how does price behave when it gets to those levels once it's out of balance again. So remember when it's inside of range, it's considered what's in balance or in the value area according to the previous day's trading. Now, if we cannot establish that because of large moves, we respect the current level that's been put in place as a daily low or a daily high from the breakout. But once it goes outside, we now have a market that is out of balance. Understand that the market is now out of balance. Day one breakout traders are in the market. So I talk about this in section one, which I call market mastery, because when you understand this, the opening range and initial balance, this is the key to mastering the setups. If the market is in balance, your opportunities remain lower probability scalps, unless you are inside of a market that is coiling for an explosive move, not getting in front of news, using the first bounce opportunity if it presents based on the 15 minute setup we can get parabolic moves coming out of these three day setups low of day low of week low of month to high of month high of day high of week but the key thing is understanding that when a market is in balance or establishing the opening range and initial balance we can still form a thesis based on if we have a peak formation a high or low of a week in place but we're still waiting if the market is in balance to either give us an opportunity for an explosive move out, which often will occur on news. So if the news catalyst breaks out, now we have a market that is potentially going out of balance. If the market breaks out during a session and there is no news on the calendar, no news on the calendar, ask yourself, why did the market explode? No news, get suspicious. If this is between sessions, get suspicious because now heading into the new timing window, we can get a parabolic setup heading into the beginning of the session. Markets only do three things. They trend, they false break reverse, or they stay range bound in a trading range, which means they have not broken out. If they break out, they can trend until they get a false break and then we can reverse and have large three-day parabolic explosive setups or they can stay inside of a trading range which can still be 50 75 100 pip high probability session trades but if they haven't broken out and they're in value or in balance we're still inside of a trading range false breaks can be the beginning of large moves False breaks. Again, we talked about this in the previous videos, the importance of understanding the timing specifically for the currencies. The equity market opens. If you're trading gold oil indexes, the US market opens, especially if it's the S&P, NASDAQ, or the Dow. Obviously, if you're trading the FTSE, the London market open. If you're trading the Nikkei, the Asian market open. So how can you backtest? Well, here's the easiest way to backtest. 
Ask yourself each day, we talk about the trigger days. We talk about trigger day signals because I keep saying this, hindsight pays. If you can tell what's happened yesterday, or if you have a trigger day or a thesis, that can build into your trade setup thesis in the session that you're trading on the day or over the course of the week in the template that you're trading and then identifying which instrument offers you the best setup in the session that you're trading. So we can go back, we can look at any week. Just You can start on any week, forget about your day counts and everything for now. Let's just look at our Monday, Tuesday and look at the closing price. We have Friday's closing price. Now you can go back through all your own charts and test this yourself. We'll walk through a few examples and in the interest of time, I'm gonna just walk through the basic concepts of understanding how a market closes and the day count in terms of the opening range initial balance starting a new week and then understanding whether or not a market is out of balance or in balance. Now we have a market that broke out on Friday's close. This was a day three uh, close a breakout trade on Monday heading into Monday our new week. Now the breakout level is always a potential level for a market to trade back to. We've got a, a new daily low and the breakout level low as a potential area for auctioning between. The market breaks through that and closes right near the high of the day. So we have a market that on Friday closes out of balance and on Monday closes out of balance or at that daily low as well. But in the effort of trying to do that, it pushed a bit higher. We had higher highs on the inside. So it tried to break out, but it was not successful. But we have an opening range now for our new week. We have a market that has closed essentially right at the daily low of Thursday's breakout level from Friday. The market then on our day two auctions down into that low of Monday and our Friday low, which extended the range down, but still closed in the value area of Friday in balance again, and then exploded for a parabolic short squeeze at the low of the month, the low of the week, the low of the day, right at the beginning of the Asian session, sorry, the US session. Now, I'm not going to go into any entries or anything else. You can do that because the five minute entry criteria was locked in. And this is a setup that has built over three weeks. Week three shorts are in the market. We have an opening range that has broke structure on the inside. The market closed out of balance and then breaks outside of Monday's range. We have a market now that has gone out of balance. A market that opens outside of value is out of balance and carries with it greater opportunity and risk. Now remember, Monday opened out of balance. Friday closed out of balance. Monday opened out of balance. That market returned from out of balance. If we project Thursday's low across, back in balance. Now remember, Thursday's low got broken. Thursday's low got broken. We had breakout traders in the markets. That means there's money sitting on top of Thursday's breakout traders. Some of them may have moved it down to Friday's. That was cleaned out into the end of the session on Tuesday. Now we have day one longs in the market at the close of Tuesday's pr uh, price action. We have day one longs in the market and we have a market that has closed out of balance. The market continues to go higher. So again, traders are trying to counter trend a market that has broken out and is still out of balance. It cleans out Thursday's highs. If we come back, we can look and we can see the high of the week is from the previous Monday. We can put that up there as potential areas for this market to head. Now, going a little bit further back to our Geometrical structures, Peter Brandt, Schaubacher, Edwards and McGee. This is a large rectangle at the bottom of the month. We now are targeting possibly two full expansions of the range. This isn't Fibonacci. This isn't any other 
fancy thing. It's just 100% of the bodies. This is a rectangle. Go read Edwards and McGee. Go read Schaubacher. Study Peter Brandt. Classical charting techniques from over 100 years ago. 100% expansions of the range. Now, this can apply on a daily basis. A London high, Asian low for a range expansion in the U.S., whatever that may be. But we're talking about breakouts. Breakouts. Because most breakouts fail. So we'll just clear this chart off and look at the closing price. Closing price. We have a market that then trades higher. Day one. Day two longs in the market and still closes out of balance. So out of balance again outside of the previous day's level. Now something else traders need to focus on. We talk about higher highs. We also want to look at higher lows. So we'll project these levels across. The market then, as we saw previously, trades back into the breakout level and gives an inside day. So inside days, we talk about their significance in the playbook. Inside days, depending on how they present and the template that they're in, offer opportunities for false breaks, trend trades, low-hanging fruit, page 69 importance of being a hindsight trader we have an inside day that also uh, continues to trend and break the daily high the next day so we have day two longs in the market notice the inside day we'll just mark this off closes inside of the previous day's range so it's still in the value area it hasn't broken out in either direction the next day we have a market that breaks a daily high but we're still in the value area continues to go higher we have day three longs in the market day three longs in the market this is friday now what's significant about day three longs in the market is that again at the end of the day the end of the week the end of the session the market closes out of balance again outside of the previous day's range out of balance and that can potentially set us up for a large move. We had a large move that continued from the breakout from the monthly low. And then we had a market that gave a false break and made a lower low within the day itself and closed inside of the value area of the previous day. So again, if we project Friday's levels across, we have a market that was in breakout and the next day closes inside of the range. That also gave us our first red day. First red day is a day that closes below the open after it's broken higher and broke down and closed below the open. Peak formation up, breaks down, closes below the open. So if a lot of traders are calling every down day a first red day, no, look at the pattern breakout traders in the market, out of balance, the false break of a daily high, and the collapse of the pump day closes outside of the range. No, we're not always going to see it present like this because we can get a low of the week, and then we can get a Monday day, day one that doesn't break the high of Friday. It just may close out of balance and break down and pump up and break down again and roll over on day two. But this is a textbook five-star opportunity if it presents after our first red day. The market closed out of balance. Remember what I said about higher lows. We have the low from the first breakout day. We have the low of our inside day. These are like steps walking up into the high. Three higher lows and then the market puts in a low of the day on Monday and pumps up into our High bull, possible major resistance from the collapse at the end of the U.S. session. High bull, major resistance in the playbook. High bull, major resistance. And these are all things that a lot of people have just blown over as lip service. Understand what they mean. Understand what they mean when they present on the chart. The market gives a high of day short trade in the London session. First red day, high of session, high of day opportunity if it presents for a possible five star opportunity. Now remember what happened on Friday. We broke out of Thursday's low. We broke out of Thursday's low. 
So if we broke out of, sorry, Thursday's low, uh, Wednesday's high, Wednesday's high, we had the inside bar. We have inside bar traders in the market. We have the break of Wednesday's high. Now, if we have other time frame traders in the market, the first place, the minimum they're going to head to is Friday's low. Friday's low of the day, which we'll just drop this down. That's where the money is. But if we have a possible range expansion for the downside, we can take a measured move of that high low as a possible profit target. The high low of Friday, if, if price is in a box and it's broken out and it fails and they're targeting the money, most breakouts fail day one, day two, day three. That is a huge opportunity for five star trading. Now the market breaks down. Traders are looking to buy the low of the day in a first red day collapse in a range expansion. This is why traders blow their accounts out. They're trying to buy the low of the U.S. session. And this is an all in collapse that will not come back. So coming back to the topic of this video, mastering breakouts, not the chop inside, understanding what happens when the market closes, understanding what type of day we had. Is it in balance or out of balance? Front side, back side, all these things. So let's go look at the pound yen. We just look at this week. So we have uh, Friday closed as a breakout day. Friday closed as a breakout day. But Monday auctioned down into the low of Friday and reversed and pumped up and closed outside of Friday's range. So remember what Dalton said. A market that opens outside of value is out of balance and carries with it greater opportunity and risk. If breakout traders are in the market on Friday and it closes out of balance and that fails, our first area of interest would be Friday's high and possibly Thursday's. The, the low of Thursday was broken out of and traders, breakout traders are in the market. Now notice the creeping lower highs into the close of the day. Creeping trend with a break in structure on the inside. That builds order flow in the U.S. session for a potential Asian reversal. So coming back to hindsight, what would be significant about why I would want to be looking at Asia on Monday morning? Because it closed outside of the previous day's range. It closed outside. The market takes traders down into the low of the day, the low of the week opportunities for short trades, but understanding that this low is significant to possibly nail and bail, grab the money. London traders, however, get a break in structure on the inside. A break in structure on the inside is the formula for dump and pump. And look where that coincides with the low of the day breakout from Thursday's low. Higher highs, higher lows heading into the U.S. session for the long trade back through the high of Friday, targeting maybe the high of Thursday, except it fails at the London lower high that was put in place on Thursday's creeping trend down into the close. But coming back to the market closed out of balance. On our Monday in this week, the market closed out of balance. A day one market that closes out of balance. We have day one longs in the market. The market immediately auctions up to the high of the day and triggers day two breakouts into the market and gives Asian session traders a high of day, high of week, short trade, which was a low hanging fruit continuation trade in the Europe London window. London puts a low in place. So we have day two breakout traders in the market. And you've heard me say this, who's in the market? Longs are in the market right now. But we have a break in structure now on the inside. We have a market that broke down and made lower lows. We have a Asian session low that range, that range has been broken out of. We possibly now have a pump and dump into 
our US window. So again, coming back to traders are, are often getting caught in the pump. They're buying the pump and they get stopped out on the dump and they can't figure out what's going on, but you're inside. So if you're going to trade inside, inside of the previous day's range, remember the market went out of balance from Friday's high and it's come back in balance. We've just gone up above into the breakout and we've shorted from Friday's high back in balance. The market now closes back inside of Monday's range. We have a market now that is back inside. But we also have a market that broke the high, collapsed down, and closed back inside with a close below the open to give us a first red day. So we have a day one, Monday, low of the week, broke the low and reversed. So we had breakout traders in the market that failed breakout that failed okay day one day two is our first red day day two longs in the market first red day they immediately take it back up into the u.s session short trades remember high bull major resistance high bull major resistance right out of the playbook they've pumped it up and broke down on the inside collapsed in our london window in the gap time so again some traders took this they just had to wait around we had a peak formation high bull major resistance locked in place the collapse happened without taking out the low of the day remember we're in the value area we got breakout traders from friday's high in the market day two longs triggered up high first red day they've pumped it up and it's collapsed without taking out the low of the day targeting possibly the breakout level from Monday's US uh, Asian London session gap longs the last lower peak formation that was made before the move went up higher highs and they collapse the low hanging fruit after non farm ADP the market starts to collapse down uh, Powell speaks and bang hits the target area if traders hadn't already taken the money off and now we come to a session opportunity again lower time frame we're outside of the low of the day now we'll go to our numbers because this is all in the playbook in the putting it together section understanding stop hunts 25 to 50 pips outside of the high low range on a normal day in the timing window not just any time not after major red news and the market's collapsing for two full range expansions we're talking about a market that has worked itself outside of the range now this is a five minute chart we're looking at the euro yen we can look at any pair but we've just broken down and the market timing we'll go to this zoom in on this a little bit more we've got a creeping trend down so we've got the front side of the move you hear i repeat this over and over again people get in they, they try to get in here oh, it's at the low of the day and they want to buy it there's no entry here who's what entry is there that's not an entry we're on the front side of the move then they they try to buy it here or they get smashed they have no idea they're, they're not they're not listening the market breaks structure on the inside breaks structure on the inside then comes back down to the quarter level 25 pips outside of the range we're into the third hour one push one hour two pushes two hours the third hour starts and we get our reversal candle now this is on the five minute chart so universal entry criteria is met on this candle if you are looking for the reversal on the five minute 25 pips outside of the range quarter level down in the level one at the 25 pip level if you are looking for the reversal the easy money is the continuation so coming back and looking at this chart three levels of rise three levels of rise from 50 75 75 double zeros double zeros to 25 three session setups page 37 now i'm not suggesting using a one minute chart but when you understand the significance of once it goes out of balance and the timings and the levels now the one minute chart makes sense i wouldn't suggest doing that until you master the five minute but this is, you know, again, an opportunity where traders can have low stress, easy 
money if they understand the setups. So coming back to the simple trade was the pump up for the dump. And you'll notice right before the session starts, we're in a broken down market. It's already collapsed. It's taken out the low of the Asian session. Okay. We've gone up three levels of rise. They pump it up. We have news, non-farm ATP, ADP, sorry. And then the collapse, which is all inside of our five minute entry criteria right down into the low. This is the easy money right here. Easy money. Then if you want to take the reversal, okay, you're counter trending a broken down market. Remember, this market has been collapsing. We'll just go back to our hourly to simplify this. The market's collapsing. It's already had news. No problem. You're probably going to get 25 pips, maybe more, but it's not set up for a short squeeze. This is just a reversal that broke out. The market broke out. We'll go to our blank chart here. And that is an area of where we can see a possible reversal. So I'm not looking for a reversal at this level. Understand that. I'm not looking for a reverse. Somebody tried to buy the low of the day here. I used to do that. Remember, somebody said you never post your losing trades. Do you know why? Because I really forced myself to quit buying junk and taking junk trades. Okay, I don't know what this market's going to do when it gets here because I'm inside of the value area. The, the opportunity on the day, on Monday, was down here. Why? Because the market broke out and stayed outside. The market broke out and stayed outside. The opportunity was in Asia on that day. But that gave us a bigger three-day thesis now. And you'll notice, okay, Friday's high is where they went back to. Now, they didn't go all the way down to, to Monday's low. We already got, we've already gotten the Friday trader. The breakout trader's already been stopped out. Now, Monday's breakout trader hasn't been stopped out yet, but, but look where they went to. Pretty darn close, right? Pretty darn close. So they've gotten the guy who was long on the swing trade, pretty much got everybody else. They've come up here and got this guy. Maybe they're going to roll over tomorrow and take out the whole low of the week. No idea. Don't care. Right now, we're back inside of the range. So now, if this market was to close back inside today, guess what? I wait for it to go out of balance unless I have a larger picture that builds up over the three sessions which I could I might get another three session pump up okay we got a consolidation could be an inside day I have no idea right now we just have a US session high and a US session low and we're back inside of Monday's sorry Tuesday's value area okay so study if you want to back test things Start paying attention to whether or not a market breaks out and if it stays broken out or if it continues to move in that direction that it's broken out in, in the timing windows, at the levels, form a thesis. And remember, we can get three day setups, three session setups. But when the market breaks out and goes out of balance, if you're not sure, wait for it to get to a level. Wait for it to get to a level, okay? Broken out, it's out of balance. There's uncertainty now in the market. Pulls back, trades up to the high, collapses. Now we're back inside. We may have a high of the day in place in Asia. It broke out of a geometrical structure. Again, read Schaubacher, Edwards and McGee, Peter Brandt. These are classical charting patterns. That's just a big box. That's all it is. It's a box. They tried to break out again. It collapsed. It failed. Now, the size of that box just happen to give three full range expansions. Okay, the lower high of Asia, sorry, the, high, the higher high of Asia, the low, higher low forms a rectangle in the day itself for Asia and gives three full range expansions as a potential profit target as this market's collapsing into the London window. Bang, gets down there and reverses. I'm not saying buy this. I'm saying when it pumps up though, into the high of the day and I mark off my High bull major possible major resistance candle because they pumped it up. Guess where my target's going to be if this collapses? The low of the day. We're back inside. We now have a thesis, a market that's opened up high. This could end up being a first red day. Okay, so when I short it up here, it could collapse all the way down, back down to the low of the day and get breakout traders stopped out. What do I look for? How does price behave? What time is it when it gets there? So we're three hours into the session plus. When it gets down to the low of the day, I'm going to lock in the money. Now we got our first red day. They pump it up right away. So again, if we just go back to our breakout chart, our clean, crisp chart, 
What happens at the low of the day when it gets down to the London low? It doesn't break out, but it's on the day itself, it's closed back in the value range of the previous day. So the, the out of balance close fails. We're back inside. The market trades into the low right away and reverses. Now we have a market that is potentially on the way back up. Where's our possible area for that to fail? High bull, major resistance. That's the last peak formation that was made in the U.S. session. I have no idea what it's going to do, but it collapses down and breaks structure on the inside. Now let's go and just look at this again. Three pushes, one push, two push, three pushes before failing. That's the same thing. Maybe a Monday, Tuesday, lower low, Monday or Thursday, Friday, collapse. Could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, lower high, lower low, Thursday back to the high, Friday collapse, all kinds of scenarios, but three pushes. And sometimes the week may stay completely range bound, but it can still offer excellent opportunities when it gets to a high or low of a day. Not just buying it there, I have to have a setup. So again, coming back to the universal five minute entry criteria that, that I put in the playbook, that is all designed to keep you safe. Now, just revisiting one last thing on this video. Front side, back side. Front side gets broken. That doesn't mean we get in here. That's the break in structure. Al Brooks, trend line break, retest. Trend line break, retest. Engulfment. Okay, we get an engulfment. And then bang. Now, this is on the five-minute chart. So this trade gave traders an easy 25 pips, okay? But on the one minute chart, traders probably would have been targeting 30 to 40 in there. Now, the only reason I would ever go to that chart is when I am at the very high or low of a day or we have broken out, broken out of a range. In closing, I wanna show one fantastic chart that just paints the picture. If you understand what it means when a market goes into breakout, not a false break, a breakout. And we're heading into a new window. And go back and read the timings in the playbook. This is an opportunity when markets can go parabolic. Right in the timing window heading into the next session. Currencies, 7 a.m. New York time. The market has broken out on our universal entry criteria. We get an entry right at 7.15, sorry, 7.05 a.m for an easy 75 pip parabolic trade. Three session, US session high, okay? Three session setup that we just talked about that's in the playbook. They drop it down three levels, 25 to zero, zero to uh, 75, and doesn't quite get to 50. What's significant? We're in the third level, okay? The timing starts to kick in. Everything is timed and measured. We're at the quarter level. When the new hour starts, 7 a.m., boom, easy money, short squeeze parabolic, three session setup. So understand that if you're inside here and you're trying to, you know, catch these moves and all that stuff, have a thesis. It better be in an existing inline thesis with the bigger picture. But when it goes outside in the timing windows, 25 to 50 pips understand how these can set up for huge scalable opportunities. Hopefully you got value from today's video traders. Understand this one principle, study how a market closes. Paul Tudor Jones said this, pay particular attention to how a market closes. Keep it going, keep it growing, keep getting 1% better every single day and may the markets go with you.